Welcome back. This is part four of the mobile shower trailer build. In this video, I'm going to cover the installation of the black tank vent, and I'm going to apologize up front uh, for the first five minutes of this footage. I don't have all the video of the black tank vent. When I was cleaning up my external drive, I believe I got rid of some, some videos um, that, that showed the complete installation. But I'm going to go ahead and show what I have, and then I'm going to jump into installation of the propane tank brackets that are mounted on the front of the trailer. At the very end of the video, I, I'm going to do an overview of where I am now. Uh, today is what March 21st and I believe tomorrow the 22nd I'm probably gonna go ahead and do the installation of the RV uh, style air conditioner on the, on the roof of the unit and then that'll be video 5 which uh, which will be shortly uh, coming shortly behind this video so enjoy thanks that is a grommet that accepts a two two and a half inch uh, PVC so it basically tightens around the PVC pipe creates a seal but I'll have to go straight up through the floor. I drilled that little pilot hole right there that I showed above. So I'm gonna have an elbow coming straight up and then going horizontally across the floor for maybe 20 inches and then going up through the roof. Right below this grommet, I'm gonna install the black uh, a tank sensor. So that way, I mean, this is only a 14 gallon black tank and the back here is eight inches. So, I mean, this is maybe six inches up to where the air inlet starts. I mean, this is my only option. You know, I I, the, the, I originally had the toilet. You can see back there in my original design, I realized that the black tank was right above the axle. I couldn't squeeze it in there. You know, it just wasn't going to work there. So I ended up putting the, the toilet up here in a, in a different area. And this is where I had to place the black tank. All right, so I'm gonna plumb this black tank vent horizontally. This is this is the black tank right below us. This is the vent that I, I drew it into the side of the black tank and it has a grommet holding this, this uh, elbow coming up to the floor. If you haven't caught previous videos, I, you know, this wasn't the original placement of the gray, the black tank, but I had to move the toilet, which is now over here. The shower pan is going to be right here. And I couldn't vent into the wall because of the way the the beams are underneath the trailer, the beams that go to the, the trailer tongue. So without cutting through them, which I'm not going to do with a two inch pipe. So the best, my only solution was to come up to the floor underneath the shower pan, go through this wall here, then go up. What I wanted to do was have this check valve. It's a two inch PVC check valve. I can get it off this pipe here. Good grief. Two inch PVC check valve. It's a one way check valve. So basically the air can, you know, if the air is being sucked down into the tank when it's, when it's being emptied, you know, air can go down. But if the water ever backflows, it's, it can't come up into the airline. I really wanted that as close to the air vent as possible. I wanted it right here, but it's just it's too bulky. It won't fit underneath the shower pan. There's foam underneath the shower pan that I'm going to cut out to cover the pipe. And this is just too bulky. I couldn't even lay it horizontally. It'll just be too bulky unless I cut into the floor. Which, uh, now that I'm looking at it, I could have cut across the plywood. But uh, I, I don't... Hmm. I don't want to do all that. I'd rather come up to the floor, go underneath the foam in the tub in the shower pan. And once I get into the wall, then I'll go up and I'll install this, this check valve. So I'm going to stop right here. This I originally had video of uh, the entire installation of the black tank vent as well as removing the foam on the bottom of the shower pan so that it covered the vent. In the back you can see the tube actually uh, behind the wall going up to the ceiling. But I, I was cleaning up my, my videos, uh, my, my external drive, and I, I got rid of some footage. So 
and now I, I believe you know it was a missing part of this video so later on you'll see the shower pan in place and I think there's some some other footage of the the vent pipe but I'm going to continue on with the propane brackets uh, from this point all right so I'm going to install the two 30 pound propane tank holders on the front of the trailer sitting right on the tongue so I have to find the I need, I need to move this wire out the way and I don't have the, the right star bit but I'm just gonna start on this side basically these two holes here sit right on top of the the beam so I'm gonna drill through those I'm not sure if I'm gonna just put a tap screw through there and a washer probably so because I don't want to drill all the way through and put a bolt in the anchor I'm just gonna use a, a heavy-duty self-tapping bolt with a washer and just go through the bottom of these so the wall itself there's several holes that are going to go through the cabin into the front area where I have the water tank and I'm going to bolt onto the back wall with a washer and a lock nut I'll probably put four bolts in each each holder I have two holders so two propane tanks and it's gonna be two mounts right here in the middle I have the regulator going down to the gas line the propane line which runs back to the border here I can't mount this right now until I find the right bit to move this wire out the way I can't get this loose so if we look inside I, I disconnected the the airline for the the water tank and disconnected it from the floor and took the ratchet strap off off of one side I pull the tank back a bit just because I know myself I don't want to drill into this tank accidentally I'll, I'll try to keep the the drill short once uh, once I put the first hole I'll put some tape on the drill bit so I know exactly how far to go through the wall I just I just pushed it back so I didn't want to drill into this tank so right behind here, I'm going to have to move the tanks. I'm going to need to, if I, if I can't reach back there. So I'm going to put the washer, bolt, and lock nut behind this wall here. Coming through the propane tank holders. So, what? All right, so I'm going to use a two inch hex self-tapping screw and a washer on the bottom of the bracket. This is just to add some stability. This isn't going to... This isn't going to hold the model. I couldn't just screw it there and be done with it. So this is just to add some additional stability to it. That's on there. That's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere at all. I got a split washer, a bolt, and then a lock nut back there against the uh, the, the, the big washer. And this is really tight. This isn't going anywhere. So I'm gonna sit the propane tank on there. See how it sits.
So that's pretty tight. That's just one strap. There's two straps that come with this, but this is meant for a, uh, I believe it's a 20 pound propane tank. So normally the height of that tank would be about right here. So it, it'd be pretty balanced with the two straps. Uh, but this 30 pound propane tank is, is higher. So there the, there's one strap that goes here. This is the top strap. So then I have about a foot of tank that's not strapped in. But the idea is to eventually put another bracket back here on the wall that will grip into the back of this propane tank and just hold it. I'll, I'll probably just put a small hook or something in here just to hold it up. Because in the middle there'll be the propane regulator but also the bar that ties the two propane tanks together so this will be held down in the middle by a long bolt that's going down underneath the trailer that's going down below the tongue so between this propane tank mount and this this down strap i think it'll be pretty secure driving down the road but i'm also going to add that extra security right here at the top of the tank to tie to tie the back end right here to the trailer so I'm gonna go ahead and install the second tank holder on this side i went ahead and got the right size star bit to get this off so once i remove that i'm gonna go ahead and install this, this other one Bad boys are on there. I think these brackets that these are originally meant for the like the overland off-road vehicles uh <clears throat> mounting propane tanks on the back and then, like i said they're meant for the short uh, what are they 20 pound propane tanks i think the short ones so 
since I got that extra tall 30 gallon, I'm sorry, 30 pound tank. Yeah, these 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 are gonna work fine. Ah, oh, Maurice, you moron. Ah, I can't get these in while it's strapped on the wall. Oh, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Dang it. Normally I would edit that out, but <laughs> Whew, that's my stupidity. At least I caught it. Got to unbuckle. <laughs> unbuckle. Got to unbolt both these brackets a bit. Dang it. Bring it off the wall about an inch so I can put the straps, all four straps behind it. Hit screwdriver always. Ah, So I most, most definitely have to brace this tank up higher. As you can see, as you can see, it's, it's the bracket is really just holding the lower half of the tank. I mean, it's it's firm, it's sturdy, but this is a little added protection. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the cross brace here. I don't know if that's the actual name on this, but it's not really even centered. So I think I'm gonna order a longer one, but I need to grab onto both tanks and I want this hole 
right here in the center. It's gonna go down, it's gonna be a long uh, threaded rod, and I'll probably actually weld on a piece of square tubing underneath the tongue here that the, the, that the uh, threaded rod and a washer and a bolt go through to hold the tanks down. I mean, that should be enough. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have to, after this, after this, I shouldn't have to bolt anything back here to hold the top half, which I thought, I mean, this is, this is firm. It's, it's in there. It's firm. It's, it's not moving. So I think once I have that, I forgot the name of that bracket that I was just holding. Um, I think it's down brace. I don't know. Once that's installed, in addition to these, it's, it's firm enough. It's not going anywhere. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the things that I didn't film. I went over installing these propane tank brackets, but I didn't go over installing the black pipe for the propane line. This is a one and a half inch black pipe. So I, I didn't videotape any of that installation of that black pipe or this or the regulator, which you see here. Um, but I'm gonna walk through what's what's been done. This is a, a dual regulator here. So once one tank is empty, you can switch over to the next tank. I, I fixed the the black pipe on the front of the Venos trailer with this this rubber piece here. This is you can buy this on Amazon. This is used for the for a boat trailer to capture the front of the boat as you're bringing the, the boat on the trailer. Uh, I think it's uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's used for boats. It's used for boats trailer boat trailers. I just bolted it on the front of this Venos trailer with some um, with a self tapping screw and a and a washer. All right, this is just uh, from Amazon's the standard propane tank um, regulator valve and hose that goes into the regulator. Uh, let's see what else here. That covers that. The black pipe goes underneath the trailer, and in, in the next video when I go over the plumbing, I'll get that. It's it's real. It's not a lot of space underneath the trailer, and I can't really get underneath there right now. All right, so this is the external sink finish for the most part. I'm doing a voiceover of this uh, even though i recorded audio audio on the original video it's just it's distorted so this is the led light that was installed um this is the sink illuminated i need to go ahead and silicone those areas that i'm pointing out right there and i'm also going i'm explaining that there's you know decent space when you're washing your hand and i'm going to install a soap dispenser on the back wall there for when the the sink's in use these these are the external led lights that i installed for when the troll is being used at night uh, those are all 12 volt and I'm going to go over that in a second so I'm going to go over some of the, the things here in the utility area that I didn't previously cover so once again this is just an overview of where I am now and uh, in video 5 I'm going to continue with some of the things that are left so this is the 4 foot LED light that I installed in the back and I FRP that part of the ceiling I still need to Go, uh, so this section of the ceiling here is where I'm going to cut out the hole and brace the air conditioning unit that's, that's on the roof. And I'll show that later on in this video. So that's the next project in addition to the, to the plumbing. So I'll, I'll brace between those frames with some 2x4s. This is the external sink that I already showed. This is I didn't really videotape all the plumbing of the drains, but that's the plumbing underneath the sink. It's just it's, it's going to the same drain as the internal sink. This is the vent pipe here. Uh, one thing I was, I was saying here in the video is that this is the one thing that wasn't done right. That vent tube should have been plumbed above 
that drain. Uh, the vent has to be installed above the highest drain. And this here, as you can see, is below that drain. So uh, I'll test the lines. If, if it's not causing any issues, I'll leave it. If it's causing issues, I'll replumb that to make that have that vent above that that highest drain, which is the internal sink. Um, but that's not really that important right now. We'll see how it works when I start testing things. All right, so these are the switches for all the, the lights. Uh, that's the, the rear area that I'm in, the four foot LED back there. That switches for the two LED lights, the one in the external sink and the one inside, and that is for the other four foot LED light in the shower area. This is a 12 volt switch panel. I have, right now I have the water pump on that, and I have, uh, uh, the external USB ports and I have the external LED lights which I'm going to show right now so I'm switching on the external LED lights on this this last switch here and I'm going to go ahead and show it once again I'm doing a voiceover of this video which is pre previously recorded with voice but the voice was distorted so I have to do it in but, um, there's the LED lights illuminated on the outside as you can see All right, switch that off Uh, once I'm going to go ahead and put, you know, cover this wall up eventually. That's the, the, the negative bar for all the, the negative grounds right there tying into that switch panel. All right, this is behind the shower area. This is the hot water heater. One of the next projects is to cut a hole in that wall and vent that pipe outside. It has to go at that, that angle, that, what is that, 90 degree angle. It can't go through the ceiling. So this is a dedicated switch for that hot water heater, which controls the ignition. Uh, this is the 12 volt power supply and the dedicated plug for that as well in, in addition to another outlet to be used for something else below that is the um, 12 volts fuse box which i'll show in a second uh, well it's right below that that <laughs> power supply <laughs> if forgive me for this like i said i recorded the audio and it was i did it three times and every time i got home the video was just uh the audio was just in and out real real really bad it was really distorted so I'm doing this voiceover and I'm trying to line up with what's going on here. This is a 70 amp panel. There's two breakers in here. One breaker will, uh, it's a 15 amp breaker. It'll, it'll handle all the lights and any other uh, electric, electric, electrical appliances. The other breaker is going to be 20 amps and that's going to be dedicated to the air conditioning unit. The air conditioning unit also has a heat pump in it so it can be you know used in the summer for AC and in the winter for heat. All right, that orange wire you see is is the line in coming from outside is a 30 amp um is a 30 amp power supply um uh, what's it called the the outlet on the side of the trailer um, to plug up your, your generator this is behind the shower this is just the hot and cold water supply that is the little uh, ice maker recess uh, outlet that i installed for the water holes inside the shower area so this is all the water lines um, going from, uh, from the shower to the sinks to the to the hose and I think I'm going to go over the, the pumps next. Again, forgive me, I, I tried to record this audio three times when I went over this overview, and each time it, it came back to start on that GoPro. I'm going to, I'm going to get another camera. I'm, I'm tired of these GoPros. They overheat quickly, and I, I have issues with them. The touch screen's a pain. So uh, this is the pump. So this is the onboard water pump that will be used when, you know, if I'm using the onboard water, which is that tank in the front of the trailer, that's the 12-volt pump. Uh, next to it is the is the um, uh, accumulator tank to help with the pressure. It's uh, pressurized, a little silver tube back there is used to pressurize the tank. There's a cutoff there and a cutoff there. So there's, there's a cutoff between the hose and there's a cutoff of the city water, which is what I'm showing here. So for the most part, that's a that's a screen filter there for any, any a small sediment filter. And then the line's going up to the hot water heater. But for the most part, I'll be using city water. Um, but that water pump is there just in case I want to use the onboard tank uh, for some small jobs. All right. This is a kit I bought off of Amazon to plumb up the hot water heater. But I bought, it's a three-quarter setup and I needed half inch for this hot water heater. So, so it's a bunch of reduction. That right, what I'm pointing out right here is the actual um, release valve. So it's just going to, you have to release, if you have to release the water, I have that drain just going straight underneath the trail. It'll pour on the ground. What I'm showing here is the reduction. It's like an inch to three quarter inches down to a half inch to actually plumb up to the hot water heater. And I had to do that on both both tops and on the bottom, I just had to go from three quarter to a half inch. So next time I'll pay attention, I'll buy the half inch kit, but it's not too bad. This is the propane line um, coming up from the, the bottom of the trailer. I'm gonna hook up that hose later, but I need to actually put a, uh, a gauge on the end of that pipe 
so when I, when I go ahead and pressure test all the lines, I'll, you know, I'll pressurize it with propane and I'll, I'll go through and spray all the connections with some soapy water and make sure pressure's holding and make, make sure there's no leaks. All right. So that's, that's it for this. Uh, I think the next, I think I'm here, I'm explaining, I'm gonna install a door in this little, little utility area and right there in the ceiling, I'm gonna install the, uh, the other uh, fantastic uh, vent that I have, the, the ceiling vent, uh, the same type of vent I have in the shower area because you need to have um, proper ventilation back there with the hot water heater and I don't want any you know carbon monoxide build up even though I have a detector on board you know, I don't want to you know, cause, you know, cause any issues with carbon monoxide getting into the shower area Alright, this GoPro is hitting getting hot as they do all the time this is a shower bench that I installed. If anyone thinks of buying this and installing, them, installing it themselves, you need some help. <laughs> it's a small item, but I had to have help just balancing this thing and getting it positioned right. Yeah, I'm 250 pounds. I sit on there just fine. No issue. It holds my weight. This is the water inlet for the toilet. I, I plumbed this wrong. I should have went a little further over. I realized that the line came out right behind the toilet right where the water is supposed to go into the line should go into the toilet but i needed a cutoff valve there wasn't enough room so i had to do a do a turn and then i just grabbed some flexible tubing to connect to the back of the toilet i could have i could have went another route I'm, I'm sure this will hold the pressure if it doesn't i'll change this out to a proper um uh, toilet line all right okay what else in here haven't we seen still got to finish all the ceiling trim corner trim a little toilet paper dispenser there this is for the air conditioning unit the remote control itself is the thermostat so it has to stay in the area that's being cooled but it's in this box so no one can tamper with it i have to finish the frp up here and then trim around the doors all right and i think the last thing is the air conditioning i'm sorry the air conditioning is going to come in here and i have to find where i'm going to put the vent for the air conditioning to come in here because i don't want the cold air coming in here then immediately being sucked out by the the roof vent so i gotta figure that one out that's really gonna be some some trial and error i have to probably do some research on how that should be done boom and also i did a horrible job I was rushing. don't rush every time i rush i, I mess something up so i i should have i thought the i thought the trim was enough for me to cut a square opening and it'd be covered but I should have rounded it as, but there was no template that came with this, this window, man. It, it, I, I wish they shipped this with a, with a template for you just easily to cut the hole out with a jigsaw. But I, I'm going to have to fill these cracks with some, some foam, some expanding foam, uh, and then bondo it after I glue the window. And the window's not glued in right now. I just put it in to see how it will look. And I put the window on the door. It's a privacy glass, but you can still see shapes through it. So I'm going to put a curtain behind it in the side of the shower. I put it on here just to let additional light into the shower area when it's in use. So uh, that's about it. Um, I put the air conditioning unit up on the roof. Um, that was that was a job. That thing was heavy, and I had to put it on my shoulder and get it up here on the on the roof. There it is, sitting there. It's just sitting there right now. Um, it's not hooked up. It's just laying there. Uh, so once I measure exactly where it needs to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up, and that is a dual, a dual pump. Um, that's a dual unit, so in the winter time, that, I can also use that for heat. Mm -hmm. I would crawl underneath the unit to show the plumbing, but let's see. I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see if I can squeeze down here, stuff. Get this overview all in one video. Bear with me. Oh, I'm sorry for the grunts. The footage like yeah, that. Those grunts sound horrible. But... All right, let's see. All right, so I'll try to get this. Get a little closer. So that is the drain coming from inside the rear area um, for the the sink. Um, um, combined to that one drain and it's the pipe bending going down 
and right there is we can see that sorry that is the shower coming out the the shower drain coming it's a two inch coming out the floor and i'm at the point where i need to tie the two together i i previously had it tied together but it's it wasn't tied together correctly so i have to redo it um and down there i'm sorry for the camera angle is the black tank and the the, the um uh, the three inch pipe coming out the black tank. I have to tie all this into that with um, and, and install the RV um, tank release valves. So I have to figure all that out. But that's while I'm down here, that's that's the black pipe right there going going by. You can see I'll get better video of that next time. All right, 